Hi everyone, welcome back to Shane Plays Let's Play series of Shadowrun Returns Dragonfall. This will be part 9. Uh, we just finished basically uh, taking care of business at the Humanus compound and now we're heading back to our neighborhood, the Cruise Bosser. So it says the U-Bahn, which is sort of their subway, or it is their subway, Ride home feels especially comforting today. The Berlin chapter of the Humanus Poly Club has suffered a terrible blow, and you're the one who dealt it. Volker Stahl's plan to incite a wave of bloody violence across Berlin has been derailed. It isn't often that a Shadowrunner gets to prevent an atrocity on the job. So, let's go. Any second now would be nice. But if you're taking it, tweet Tom. Okay, there we are. So I need to, uh, got several new objectives uh, loading up there. Your PDA rings in the face of your fixer, Paul Amsel, appears on your screen. Quick Luke, I have new information to discuss about the estate. Please come as soon as you can. I'm assuming that's the estate where the dragon is evidently living, that we learned a couple of parts back. The, the original estate that we raided at the very beginning of the game, and uh, we've, we've since discovered is most likely there's a dragon's lair underneath. So, let's see what we can find out. First, I'm going to go up here and check. There were a ton of objectives that piled in. So, um, okay, this is optional. Notify Luca Dura that his task is complete. Optional return the data to the Shockwellen Rider payphone. I'll do both of those. This so would need to notify Samuel of the Humanus plot. Talk to Amsel and raise 50 grand to pay Alice, who's digging up information on uh, the dragon forest, the fire wing or flame wing. All right, so let's talk to Samuel. Hello, Samuel. Hello again, my friend. What can I do for you? I say I've uncovered what Humanus is up to like to talk about your organization no questions I'm just passing by I'm just gonna say I've uncovered what Humanus is up to you'll find the details on this data pad Beckenbauer eyes the plans on the data pad then nods grimly this fits with Humanus's established pattern of behavior horrific and vile according to this data pad Humanus compounds all over Berlin have received similar shipments they are planning to deploy the gas tomorrow morning sells sharply and nods again. I have a feeling that the flux state will have a thing or two to say about this. Stahl has overstepped his bounds. His hubris will be his undoing. You mark my words. With the next few hours, the Humanus Poly Club is going to take a hammering that will make the Night of Rage look like a peace rally. I owe you a great deal, Quick Luke. We all do. I will wire your payment to the account number that Amsel provided. And I shall say, Pleasure doing business with you. So, uh, objective complete, did that. Okay. So, let me, I'm pretty sure, I'm not pretty sure, I'm positive that the phone booth is this way. So, and I think they wanted the the list of the Humanist members or donors. It's an old obsolete phone booth. Deliver the Humanist donor list. Right. The machine accepts the data upload and only a few moments later a certified cred stick is spat out the coin slot. The phone's old LCD readout displays the text freedom and quality information. Shock well narrator. So walk away. So I got Karma, one point of karma, and 500 new yen for that. Mm 
Now the other guy, the other optional mission, I'm pretty sure he's in the cafe. So let's go over to the cafe. And there we go. Let's see if he's in here. Yep, yeah, there he is. So Lucador says, Welcome back, runner. I say the humanist leader is safe. Hope that pays off. Luca Dewar says, uh, it does for you. Here's your bonus. My bosses will be pleased to know that you can be relied on in the future. See you around. So these guys, you know, they, I still have the feeling that they're kind of mafia in the sense that if you try to turn down their jobs, you know, they, they'll threaten you or maybe actually do something to you. So it's it's not like you have a lot of choice, although, you know, maybe it would just provoke a fight and then, you know, my team would win. I, I don't know. So this guy doesn't have any new options, so I'm going to go and split out. Let me go talk to Blitz here. What's up, Blitz? Blitz stubs out a cigarette at your approach. Quick look. I was hoping I'd see you. Do you have another run lined up for us yet? I'm strapped for cash. Like I say, don't worry, we're doing fine on the job front. Like I say, why are you strapped for cash? Uh, with the work we, amount of work we've been doing, you should be rolling a new in. Or when I have a run for you, I'll tell you. Until then, don't bug me about it. I'm going to say, why are you stressed for, or strapped for cash? What can I say, Chief? He tries on a thoroughly unconvincing smile, but immediately seems to think better of it. The anxious look returns to his face. I have expensive taste. Say, how expensive are we talking here? Even if you had a raging cram habit, I'd think that you'd have at least some money left. I was hoping for a straight answer. You've got a talent for deflection blitz. Fair enough. I'll say I was hoping for a straight answer. And you're annoyingly persistent. If you must know, I'm in debt. That's where all the money's go That's where all the money's going. In debt to who? He hesitates for responding. When he does, his voice carries an edge of annoyance. No offense, but this is being getting a little too personal, Chief. My debts are none of your business. So uh, I was going to say, if some bookie sends his thugs here is looking for you, it's going to become my business. So talk. Or I could say you come to me begging for work and then tell me that it's none of my business. No blitz. You tell me why you need the money. I'll be judged of that. I'm going to say if some bookie sends his thugs here looking for you, it's going to become my business. So talk now. Blitz shakes his head in exasperation. All right. Fine. First off, you don't need to worry about anybody coming after me. My debts are to a bunch of old contacts. If I don't pay them, I'm going to lose them. In this line of work, it isn't smart to burn bridges. Second... Before you ask, those debts are for services rendered. I was in a tight spot, I needed some help, and I threw around a lot of IOUs to get it. Third and finally, the trouble I was involved, I was in involved a girl. I'll tell you about it if you ask me to, but we're verging into deep personal feelings territory. So if you don't want to hear me sob over my ex-girlfriend, you'll drop sub subject now. So it's up to you, Chief. You really want to go down this road, or shall we keep this relationship professional? Uh, I could say uh, you're clearly preoccupied with this, and our line of work preoccupied can give you killed. So spit it out. We'll deal with it. This is a professional relationship. And the last thing I want is to hear about your love life, or go ahead tell me I'm interested. So if I was trying to do as I think quick Luke would do and say this is a professional relationship I don't I don't need to know however game wise you know a lot of times it's interesting to learn more about your team members and maybe you can unlock quest, side quests or something so or just make things more interesting so I'm going to say hey spit it out and we'll deal with it let's meet you guys for a moment that looks away in size all right where to begin I met Emily in Drogan Kippa. She was the first person who was ever more important to me than myself. That's crazy about her chief. To this day, she's the only person I've ever met who could out-deck me. And the real kicker is that she wasn't even a decker by trade. 
There was nothing she wasn't good at. I like to dabble in rigging, but Emily, that girl could pick up anything she set her mind to. Say, you loved her, I get it. Skip to the part where you racked up those debts. Okay, this is from... This was a mistake. I take it back. Let's keep the relationship professional. I'm going to say you loved her. I get it. Skip to the part where you racked up those debts. All right, Chief. Sure. So I'm sure that you've already seen this coming, but I lost her. One day, she just disappeared, along with most of my decking gear. The only explanation was a handwritten note on old-fashioned paper. Leave me alone. That was it. We've been together for years, and that was all she left me. That and this beat-up old cyber deck. Naturally, I freaked. We had our share of arguments, but we never had a huge blowout or anything. I couldn't think of anything to drive her to do a thing like that. Mostly, I felt hurt, so I searched for her in the real world and in the Matrix. And when that turned up nothing, I started tapping my contacts. And that was when I started racking up debt. And so, did you find her? Or I can say that answers my question. I don't need to hear any more about your love life. I'm going to say, and so, did, did you find her? Nope, she's gone, quick Luke, without a trace. I looked high, I looked low, I poked into everything I could think of. My contacts did the same. He shakes his head. She's gone, Chief. At this point, I've accepted that. But I still have to repay those debts. Yeah, I could say I'm surprised you've given up so easily. There must be some place you haven't looked. I say I feel for you, man, but you're right. Best to leave the past past. Pay your debts and move on. I'm going to say there must be some place you haven't looked. He blinks. I don't know, Quick Luke. I really did look everywhere at a great personal cost. I say, if she means that much to you, you owe it to yourself to try. Yeah, yeah. You might be right. Shakes his head. I thought I was done with this, but you're right. Without some kind of closure, I'm never going to be at peace with this. Thanks for the talk, Chief. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> I can say you do that, Blitz. Good luck. Or please don't. We'll say you do that, Blitz. Good luck. So, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess encouraging to dig on back into the situation. Maybe that'll unlock some more stuff in the game. Da -da -da. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's go into our old trusty HQ. La la la. Hey, it's Dante the dog. Hey, Dante. You look up, see a pair of bright eyes and a scruffy old face looking back at you. Some instinctive level, he must know that the master is gone. Okay, we've been through this. Uh, I could say, pet him, sit, play dead, or walk away. I must say, sit. He sits. I must say, play dead. Seems that he doesn't know that one. I'm pet him. Woof. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. Let's do the old catch up on the uh, companions run here. Glory. For the first time since you met her, Glory's expression seems to brighten. It's subtle, but it's there. You're sure of it. Quick, Luke. A pleasure as always. Need anything from me? Say how are you doing? So if I didn't know if, if I didn't know any better, I think you were warming up, warming up to me. Are you ready to tell me about that chrome you're sporting? Any thoughts about that last run? Just wanted to hear the sound of your voice. Say any thoughts about that last run? I have no strong feelings about the run one way or the other. Humanus is, of course, a horrible organization. But then, so is every other target we've run up against, or we've run against. To say that they deserved it would be redundant. She pauses to consider for a moment. I suppose it would have been nice to see Stahl die, but his days are numbered anyway. When the F-State discovers what he was planning, he's going to wish he was never born. So, I'll say, are you ready to tell me about that chrome you're porting? Sporting? I'm getting there quick, Luke, but you'll have to give me some time. The answers will come when they do. Alright, I'm going to say, if I didn't know any better, I think you were warming up to me. She studies for your face for a moment before responding. I, so, I suppose you might say that. I don't talk to many people quick, Luke. It just doesn't seem to be worth the effort. I don't I don't really feel much anymore. Not since she caresses the chrome of her forearm or the hand made of articulated steel. This. 
If that's true, why are you still talking to me? I suppose because you've shown interest and because you haven't let me push you away. She locks eyes with you. Her expression is blank. I don't want to mislead you quickly. I don't feel anything. Not warmth or friendship or even trust. But I can appreciate the effort you're making. It's something new and it's worthy of exploring. So you said... I can say, how are you doing, Glory? I can say, uh... Some of the things went bad when you turned 14. I'd like to keep talking about that. Or just wanted to sell your voice, goodbye, or take it easy. I must say, you said the things went bad when you turned 14. I'd like to keep talking about that. She stares at you, her face expressionless. No, I'd rather not. Why not? Because I don't see a reason to. The memories are unpleasant, and dredging them up doesn't serve any real purpose. Say so you're wrong about that. The last time we talked, it had an impact on you. That's reason enough to continue. I say, fair enough, I'll give you your space. We'll say you're wrong about that. Last time we talked, it had an impact on you. She pauses a moment to consider your words, a troubled look on her face. I suppose that's true. Feeling discomfort is better than feeling nothing at all. All right, here's the deal quick, Luke. I'm going to talk. You listen. When I'm done, I'm done. No complaints, no arguments. We'll see what happens. Deal? Uh... I can say deal, or I can say this is all getting way too serious. Keep your life story to yourself. I'm going to say deal. Right. The thousand meter stare creeps back into Glory's eyes. A moment later, she's locked away in her own head again, reliving memories that she had long since filed away. So a few days after my 14th birthday, I began to express magically. So I can say you're magically active. I can say you should have figured you were burnout. That why you went nuts with the discount chrome. You couldn't hack it as a street mage. Go on, Glory. I'm going to say, uh, go on, Glory. There's another long pause, and Glory becomes more animated. Anyway, I turned 14. I awakened. I don't even remember how my parents found out about it anymore. I think that my dad caught me playing with a tiny city spirit that I coaxed out of a pile of garbage. Something like that. With everything that happened afterward, those days are kind of a blur. What I do remember is my father's response to the revelation that his little girl was a witch, uh, a hexa. He beat the living crap out of me with his fist, and then his belt, and then a claw hammer that he grabbed out of his toolbox. All the while, my mother was screaming and flailing at him. She took a couple of licks with a hammer, too. Say it's a miracle you survived. Say, I'd very much like to murder your father. Uh, say, what about the neighbors? Did anyone call the police or the prosecutors? Say, it's a miracle that you survived. I'm just lucky, I guess. So finally, after what felt like an hour, Dad stopped tuning me up with the hammer. I had broken ribs, a busted arm. Couldn't see out of my left eye. My entire right side was covered with one giant bruise. I was bleeding all over the place making a real mess of the carpet. He spat on me, his bleeding, crying daughter. He spat on me, told me that I was des tufels hur, the devil's whore. Then he kicked me out of the house. As I was crawling away, my father told me if he or any of his Kruzritter brothers ever saw me again, they'd treat me as the Berlin chapter treats the enemies of God. If you're not familiar with how the cruise ridders here in Berlin deal with heretics, it's decidedly less pretty than what my dad and his buddies did to their victims. I got the hint, and the next morning, I hitched a ride out of Stuttgart. So I could say, you're a human girl, presumably with an ID. Why didn't you go to the hospital? Say, gutsy move, you're a smart kid. Go on, Glory. I'm going to say, uh, why didn't you go to the hospital? I say, oh, I, I did but not in Stuttgart, or Stuttgart. If I went to a local hospital, the kind of injuries the dad gave me, there'd be questions. And I couldn't afford to stay in town any longer than I had to. Even my dad, dad wound up getting arrested for beating me, the rest of the local cruise ridders would have found me, and I'd wound up skinned alive and thrown into the neck car. I wound up in Tübingen. I figured it'd be a safe enough place to find medical attention 
maybe to call home. It's not far from Stuttgart, but it has a huge student community that I figured I could blend into. And the university there has a decent magic department. My ride dropped me off the university hospital, and they passed me up pretty good. Had some questions for me about how I got so beaten up, but I lied and told them I'd been mugged, which played nice and even complete lack of cash credit and identification. Chloe pauses for a moment, looks down at the floor, then fixes her eyes on you. She is visibly tense. We're going to have to fast forward to the next few years. I was a kid on the street. I got by as best I could, doing whatever I had to. The rest we can leave to your imagination. Good. So I can say, good. I can say you did what you had to. I'm no stranger to that myself. I don't think anyone working in the shadows is. Or, of course, I only need to hear with what you're comfortable talking about. Nothing more. I'm just going to say good. Because she's like, good. I'm going to say good. She says, good. Glory's clenched jaw relaxes somewhat, and the tension drains out of her shoulders. Thanks. So anyway, I lived on the street for a few years. Got used to being hungry all the time. Got used to being getting rained on. Got by. I was painfully aware that I had magical talents, but without any kind of training or guidance, I didn't really know how to use or develop them. Truth be told, they scared me, so I more or less ignored them. So it just sort of went like that until a few days after my 17th birthday. Then I met Marta, and everything changed. Marta was a sweet girl. At first, I took her for a street kid like me. Her clothes were a little ratty, and she seemed comfortable being near me. But she also looked well-fed and happy, and those were two things I hadn't been in years. We started hanging out, and before I knew what was happening, I was in love. There was a genuine attraction between Marta and me, I think. But I also think that a lot of my affection for her came from the fact that she was the first person in years to give a darn about me. She cared, and I loved her for that. Glory pauses. She looks flus flustered. Her composure cracked. Keep going, Glory. She stares at you for a beat, then nods. A few ragged breaths later, she continues. Marta told me about a place where she'd been hanging out. She invited me to join her there. It was called Frustella, the fireplace, and it was sort of a commune for dispossessed youth. It turns out that a lot of street kids I've known over the years have moved there. The way that they had disappeared, I assumed they had been kidnapped or killed, or had gone back to their parents. But there they were. I remember being kind of angry about it, like, how did everyone get the memo about this but me? Marta calmed me down. She was good at helping me work through my feelings, and I wound up following it or through our still. To a street kid, it was basically paradise. The owner, a guy named Harrow, had set up this little farm just outside Tübingen in the Schönburg Forest. Schönburg is officially a nature park, but not many people go there nowadays. Nowadays, Too much fear of the paranormal, I guess. Anyway, park or not, it was plenty big enough for us to hide in. It was also safe and pretty, and the farm was well-stocked with food. Most importantly, Fristella gave us a sense of community and stability that we had never had on the street, and we loved Harold for that. He became like a surrogate father to us. Glory pauses again, and you recognize the distinctive flush in her cheeks. She seems to have come out of a reverie once again. That's enough for now. I need to process all of this, and I don't want to continue forward until I've had the chance to do that. I know this has all happened years ago, but I guess it's still pretty raw to me. So I'm going to ask you to give me some space for a while. She turns away. And the frost begins to creep back into her voice. We can pick it back up later. Alright, so... I'm going to talk to her again real quick. Let's see what... we got a job to prepare for. Yeah, okay, so she doesn't want to talk anymore. I didn't figure she did. So we're getting more and more backstory off everybody. Let's go talk to Eager. As you approach, Eager turns to face you. Her rifle has been field stripped. It was lying in pieces on a sheet of butcher paper. Ranged in a neat row along the edge of the paper are bottles of copper solvent, bore cleaner, and lighter fluid. Our fearless leader returns. What do you need? Say, are we good now, Eager? Any thoughts about that last run? Thanks, Eager. Say, are we good now, Eager? Depends on what you mean when you say good. I won't question your competence again. Not in front of the others, at least. I'm not going to lie. I still have concerns about you, Quigloop. 
So I could say uh, what kind of concerns, feelings mutual, as long as those concerns re remain between you and me, we'll be fine. I'm going to say as long as those concerns remain between you and me, we'll be fine. She nods. No need to worry, Quick Luke. My job is to support you and the rest of this team, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. As long as you hold up your end, everything should work out just fine. So is there something else that you want to talk about? Or can I get back to cleaning my rifle? I can say, you said you had concerns about me. I'd like you to voice them. Any thoughts about the last run? Or thanks, Eager. I say, yes, said you had, yeah. You said you had concerns. I'd like you to voice them. She shrugs. All right, if that's what you want. You're green, quick, Luke. Too green to lead this team. That's my professional assessment. And yeah, I'm concerned about the situation. You can alleviate those concerns by doing your job and doing it well. That's the only thing that will fix it this time. I'm not going to let history repeat itself quick, Luke. That won't happen on my watch. So eager, I thought that we passed this. You said you don't blame me for Monica's death. Say worry all you want. The team is going to succeed with or without you. I'm going to say what history are you talking about? Let's just say I've had bad luck with underexperienced teammates and leave it at that. So is there something else that you want to talk about? Or can I get back to clean my rifle? She says that a lot. Say, so I'd like to hear about your time in the KSK. She shakes her head. No, I'm not in the habit of sharing war stories, Quick Luke. Not with people who've never served. You say, what, you think I wouldn't understand? Or it doesn't have to be a war story, I just want a better idea of who I'm running with, or fair enough. I'm going to say it doesn't have to be a war story. I just want a better idea of who I'm running with. She looks you in the eye for a moment, evaluating. Finally, she shrugs. All right, quick loop. You win. I owe everything to my time in the KSK. From my street name on down. So, you tell me what you want to know, and we'll see where this goes. All right, I'll say, uh, tell me how you got your street name. Back when I was in basic training... A fellow recruit made a vulgar joke at my expense. He said that I reminded him of the north face of the eager in the Bernie's Alps. Huge and beautiful, but dangerous to climb. His tone left little doubt about what sort of climbing he had in mind. I think he was trying to proposition me in his clumsy way, poking me in front of the other recruits to try to provoke a reaction. Anyway, he got one. I broke through his ribs and the name stuck. Uh, I say, remind me not to proposition you. A frown crosses her face. Either you're trying to be cute or you've completely missed the point. Neither would surprise me. I didn't break his ribs because he propositioned me, quick Luke. I'm not a savage. Put that recruit down because he demeaned me and he did it in front of our peers. So you got angry and you attacked him. I'll cry you a river. You overreacted. Calm down, Eager. I was just joking. I'm going to go with calm down, Eager. I was just joking. Funny. That's exactly what the recruit said as he was being dragged off to the medic's tent. It was just a joke. I didn't mean anything by it. I was never him by the top, reprimanded by the top brass, though. They knew what I knew. Whatever the recruit's intent, he put me in a situation that required a response. Okay, I stand where I, correct, where I corrected. Or I could have said that um, I don't understand. You might mean that, or you could just be trying to de-escalate the situation. You tell me, fearless leader, you want to hear why I did what I did? Or would you rather just not drop it? Because there are plenty of other things I'd be doing right now. I could say, go ahead, tell me, or honestly, I'm done with this. I'll say, go ahead, tell me. All right, I will. As soon as that idiot made his little joke, it was a foregone conclusion that I was getting saddled with the nickname Eager. My only choice in the matter was whether it happened under his terms or under mine. If I hadn't broken that twit's ribs, the name Eager would have meant a difficult sexual conquest to a whole barracks full of recruits. That's what I would have been to them from that point on. My own accomplishments be damned. Thanks to what I did, my new name meant the troll who doesn't take crap from anyone instead. It's a name I'm 
proud to go by, and I've hung on to it ever since. Eager pauses for a moment that looks you in the eye. A word of advice to you, quick Luke. If anyone ever puts you in the position that he put me in, if he demeans you in front of your unit, whatever his intent, the appropriate response is to put that person down. Hard. Out in the field, nothing will kill you faster than losing the respect of your team. So I can say, by that logic, by that logic, I should have broken your ribs after Monica died, or that's good advice anywhere out in the field or here in the shadows. I'm going to say, by that logic, I should have broken your ribs after Monica died. In your place, I would have. She looks you up and down, appraising you. Not that you succeeded, and not that you would have succeeded if you tried. But in terms of saving face, it would have done wonders. In all seriousness, quick Luke, I'm sorry that I put you in that position. I shouldn't have, and I acknowledge that. She straightens. Need anything else, or can I get back to prepping for our next run? I'm going to say, tell me about your team. She nods. Fair enough. I guess you've earned it. There were eight of us, two commando squads, working together as a single unit. Schmidt and Lang were combat deckers. Wolf was our rigger and combat engineer. Fisher handled demolitions. Braun was a medic, and the rest of us, Metzer, Kruger, myself, were weapons experts. Our mission was extraterritorial, technically illegal, but important enough to justify the risk. We'd been sent across the border into Poland. The Russian Mafia had set up a cottage industry in human trafficking all along the older Nysa line, and it was our job to disrupt it. So, finally, my etiquette comes into play here that I chose at the beginning of the game. So etiquette security, I can say that sounds more like a police action than a military operation. Wouldn't the GSG usually handle that kind of thing? And I'm not sure who the GSG is. Um, not for that matter, I don't know who the KSK is. Anyway, he's basically picking up. It's like, why were you guys doing this? So, etiquette security. Typically, yes. But in recent years, the Russian mob has become more and more heavily militarized. The brass decided that they posed enough danger to the region to qualify as a terrorist threat. And that brought them under our purview. Anyway, we were a good team. Experienced. We went through a lot together. And we chalked up a lot of kills. In our own way... I'd like to think we did some good. So I could say, who was in command or what happened to the team? Say, who was in command? Metzger. Best leader I've ever had the pleasure of serving under. Her face clouds. He was a heck of a man. But he went down with the rest of the team. Everyone but me. So I could say, what happened? She shakes her head. No, no. That's one story I won't be telling. They died. That's all that you need to know. I can say thanks to you. So is there something else that you want to talk about? Um, I can say any thoughts about the last run, even though she didn't go on it. For all the moral ambiguity that we've been wading through, hitting Humanus was incredibly satisfying. What they had planned makes my blood boil just thinking about it. I still wish I could put a bullet in Stahl's spine, but if the fallout from tonight's run is as far-reaching as I think it's going to be, He's probably going to wind up wishing that he were dead. And that's almost as satisfying. No more questions. Thank you, Eager. She turns back to the simple, simple, uh, disassembled components of her rifle. Sure thing, fearless leader. Good talk. Okay, so I'm going to bust in here and uh, do nothing. I keep forgetting there's nothing in here. But maybe something will change. I'm going to hit the old... Shadowrun BBS. Cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fill the screen. Ah, I have one unread message. Blinking message in the upper right corner. Uh, check your inbox for new messages. You have one unread message. Right. Rejob. Hijack shipments. Um, from Gunari Metbach to Quick Loop. If you value new hardware coming to the cruise bosser, we need to talk. One of my weapons shipments was hijacked by a local gang. I can promise 500 new yen, and if you can recover the shipment, I'll have some new gear on the shelf. 
Come see me for the details. I think that's that kind of gypsy weapons dealer guy. Alright, you have zero unread messages. Uh, open the jobs directory. Uh, I'm going to claim payment for the Humana status deal. 3750. As soon as the job is finished, and wait your client's response. A few months later, a message pops on the screen. Samuel Beckenbauer, to click a look. Here's your payment, as promised. That seems low. A moment later, a second message pops into your inbox. Your payment details. We have a payment from client, 22.5. Deductions for crew salary, six grand. Ammunition and resupply costs, 1,500. Automatic deduction for Alice funds, 11,250. And remainder sent to Quick Loops account, 3750. Okay, so that's why it's so low. You gotta pay the crew, pay for ammunition and whatnot. That makes sense. Uh, you all pending and active jobs. I think the pharma cleanup job is where they wanted me to go in and kill somebody, and I just didn't feel good about that. So let's, uh, Paul Amsel. Amsel's face weeks on the screen. Quick Luke, here you will find the complete transcript of my conversation with Herr Schmidt, a potential client. As you will see, the details of the job are a bit more vague than I would like, but the payout is quite substantial. After reading the transcript, you may choose whether or not to accept the job. If you respond in the affirmative, our client will be notified and I will make all necessary preparations for the run. One other thing, Herr Schmidt provided me with a device to assist you on the run. He calls it a little black box. Apparently it can be used to compromise the power and security systems of the run site. If you opt to take the job, be sure to take it with you. Amsel's image flickers then winks away. A moment later, a glowing blue text field begins to scroll up from the bottom of the screen. Guest. Greetings, Herr Amsel. I trust, I trust this connection is secure. Amsel, naturally. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Call me Herr Schmidt. Very well, Herr Schmidt. You have some business for me. Indeed. I have a job for your team. A simple matter. Judging by what I have heard, by what I have heard of your team, I imagine that they will be well suited to the task. Go on. The interests that I represent have learned that AG Kimi Europa is working on a company-wide project, something very secret, very new. Reliable sources inform me that they're keeping a working prototype of this new venture at their Berlin facility. I see. And your employers wish us to acquire this prototype for them? Naturally. What is this project? If you want my team to grab the prototype for you, they'll need to know what they're looking for. I'm not at liberty to say. I can tell you this prototype has been branded Mark 6 or MKVI. I can also tell you that your team will find it on the 25th floor of the Berlin facility in the office of one Albrecht Hochschofer. Further, I can assist your team in disabling building security and gaining access to the 24th floor. From there, however, they will be on their own. Such vagueness can be dangerous, Herr Schmidt. I will not commit my team to a run without a better understanding of what the job entails. Facing such dangers is the purpose of a shadow runner, Herr Amsel. Your team will be rewarded handsomely for their services. My employers have set aside 20,000 new, new yen for the job. Consider it hazard pay if you wish. Make it 25,000 new yen or look somewhere else. 22,5. Final offer. Very well. I will pass your offer on to my team. Are there any further details that you can provide? Hasho Fair's office will be locked behind a vault door. The lock is old fashioned of the mechanical variety. I will provide your team with a copy of the key. I will also supply you with a little black box, a solid state device that your team can use to override a variety of building systems. Your team will enter through the facility's underground garage. When your team has acquired the Mark 6, have them exit to the same garage. I will have a van there waiting to extract them. 
Thank you, Herr Schmidt. I will pass your offer on to my team. Good day, Herr Amsel. can either accept the job or not. I'm going to accept it. Run accepted. Client notification sent. You take the little black box from the desk and pocket it before returning your attention to the screen. Uh, yeah, the pharma cleanup job, I'm pretty sure that's the one I didn't want to do. I'll look at it again real quick. You'll find the cone for the fuchs. The job seems to be the pad is reasonable. There are aspects of this run that you might feel morally. Yeah, this is the same one. Let me click through it. I don't want to do this one. Decline for now. That's where they want me to go in and just kill, not get the guy out of there before he talks, but just flat out kill him. So let's check the status of the Alice Fund. Current fund is 21250 Required funds, 50 um, Do I want to deposit five grand from your wallet? No, I don't. I may need that to buy stuff. Alright, access the Shadowlan or the Shadowland BVS. Uh, do, 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 do. Welcome to Shadowland. Uh, do I have any pay data to sell? No, oh, I do. Attach data to escrow account. Data. Okay, post a Humana safe house list. Search the BBS for relevant keywords. Uh, matching local keywords. Thread Transys Highlander, best new deck. Just got one of these from Transys Neuronet Rep. Wants me to sell them in my store, so I took the puppy for a test drive. Signal quality is insane. Makes for a huge difference in comfort, decking, fatigue. I can stay jacked in for hours and feel fine. Last session I had to set a timer just so I wouldn't forget to eat. It's from Newman's. The specs on the thing look impressive, but I'm an allegiance man. Does the comfort really make that much of a difference? My decks are generally beaters anyway. That's from Wraith Like 44. Allegiance, what are you doing with that thing? Playing video games? Any serious decking is going to require way more horsepower, horsepower than that thing could push, even overclocked. That's from Tolstoy. Only a crappy decker blames their gear. I do just find things. Wraith like 44. Uh, to Lumens, how much is Transys paying you to post this shice on here? So I guess it's uh, similar to um, being a shill, just going in and posting stuff to make it like you're talking about something to be really advertising. That's from Maelstrom. No more posts on this thread. All right, another thread. Help drowning in junk messages. Well, hey, chummers, I could use your help. Every time I jack into the Matrix these days, I'm flooded with junk mail. There's so much of it, I can't even see. Can anyone help me? That's from Roland Thunder. Great. Another newbie who thinks he's on a tech support board. Wraith like 44. Hey, stuff it. I wouldn't ask, but I'm desperate. I can't deck like this. Roland Thunder. All right, Thunder, calm down. It sounds like you've gotten traced by an ad bot. Been poking around anywhere sketchy lately? I don't need details. Simply yes or no, or we'll do. The smiling bandit. And he's changed his time date stamp. Just strikes again. Ha ha ha. No bandit. I haven't been anywhere like that. I swear. Please help me. Rolling thunder. What you want to bet? He gave his personal info to some scam site. I'll give you ten to one odds. Wraith like forty four. No, I I don't think so. All I've done was make an online dating profile. Rolling thunder. Let me guess. Meet and mate. The Smiling Bandit. How did you guess? Rolling Thunder. That's not a real dating site, Thunder. It's a place where desperate people go to get infected with malware. Wraith like 44. But what do I do? How do I make it stop? Rolling Thunder. I don't know. Buy a new deck? Best of luck. Smiling Bandit. No more posts in this thread. Alright. Go back. Uh, I think that's everything. So I'm done with the computer. Let me go talk to, uh, is it Dietrich? I never can remember it. Yeah, it's Dietrich. You really came through for me, boss. You ever need anything from me? Anything at all? 
you can call on me. I'll come running. So I could say, how's Alexander? Hold up. I'll be taking you up on that before this thing's over. Don't worry about it, Dietrich. I'm just glad everything worked out okay. I'm say, how's Alexander holding up? That's Dietrich's nephew. He's a good kid, that nephew of mine. Give him some time, and he'll shake Stahl's programming. Might take a while, but he'll adjust to life here in the cruise bosser. In the meantime, I found a good home for him. Samuel's agreed to take him in. Is that wise? Samuel's employees have no love for humanists. Most of them don't even like humans. He nods. Best thing for the kid will be to learn through immersion. If he stays with Samuel's group, he'll have no choice but to interact with metahumans. Soon enough, he'll learn that they're no different than anyone else. First few days will be rough, no question. But he'll make it through and come out of the other side a better man for it. Alright, trying to talk to him again. Quick look, what's new? Yeah, I'm going to say any thoughts about the last run you'd like to share. We hit Humanus hard. We stopped them in their tracks. We got my nephew out of there. Great work in there, boss. My only regret is that Stahl got away, but at least we knocked him down a peg. So I'm going to say, I'm curious, Dietrich, or Dietrich, why did you switch from fronting a band to running the shadows? Honestly, working the stage was getting boring, boss. Spitting and screaming at the world was fine and good when I was a kid, but it just didn't do it for me anymore. The Dragon Slayer wanted me to fight a real enemy, so I left the band behind and I turned to the shadows. Shrugs. I don't know. Guess I figured that'd be the best way to find one. I know that if I remember right, the Dragon Slayer is kind of his totem. Considering current events, I'd say you're not wrong about that. Yeah, I guess not. Feels kind of daunting, truth be told, but it's exciting all the same. I've been looking for a worthy adversary for a while now. It's kind of satisfying having a white well to chase. So I can say, how long have you been looking for a real enemy or nothing right now? I'm going to say, how long have you been looking for a real enemy, in quotes? He shrugs. Not too long. Ever since I took down the last one. I say the last one. Of course. I might be able to sit around feeling pleased with myself if I follow the Creator or the Moon Maiden, but the Dragon Slayer ain't that kind of idol. If I'm not drinking, I'm fighting. If I'm not doing either of those things, I'm looking for a bigger, better fight to get in next time. Dietrich produces a flask from his jacket pocket and raises it in the salute. It's a remarkably easy code to live by. So, I could say, who was this last one? Gang boss, great big orcish jerk called the Wild Schlin, led the local chapter of the Horde. I'd had my sights on him and it's for a while. They'd hurt a lot of people and I figured they'd pose a challenge. Wasn't wrong about that, but I took him out in the end. You say, Dietrich, when does this pattern end? Well, boss, the way I figure it, it'll end when I pick a fight I can't win. He smiles sadly. Might be this one, maybe the next. It'll be hard to top a great dragon. If that's the way the Dragon Slayer wants it, then who am I to refuse him? Roughly he turns away. That's enough talk for today, boss. Besides, you've got other things to do, I'm sure. Let's say thanks, teacher. Alright, so let me go check the stash real quick. Alright, so I'm I'm a little still confused. I shouldn't be. I'd like to be able to swap stuff out with my um, my team. Um, I wish I could send stuff from the stash to them and do swapping and stuff like that. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, I'm going to take a trauma kit and a... Uh, Frag grenade. Okay, confirm. Okay, let me go talk to uh, Herr Amsel. Paul Amsel. Quick Luke, welcome back. I have news for you. In your absence, I've been looking into the Harfield Manor. Whatever, I'm going to say Firewing, I don't know how to pronounce that, is up to, 
is both large-scale and well-funded. I've un uncovered a money trail leading from holding companies all over the world to an offshore fund with a dummy address. From there, all of that freshly laundered money flows directly into the Harfield estate. Wait a second. Why would the dragon have investors? That doesn't make sense. So that isn't good. How much money are we talking about here? I must say, wait a second. Why would the dragon have investors? That doesn't make sense. It's doubtful that the Firewings pawns even know where their money is going. This is typical of draconic plots. Uncover a stream of money flowing from behind the scenes, and there's a fair chance that you'll find a dragon at the receiving end of it. To a dragon, conspiracy is second nature. But Firewing was different. She didn't scheme or plot, she acted. Alright, so the dragon has money. This isn't exactly new information. The Hartfield men are reeked of wealth. I must say, but uh, Firewing was different. She didn't scheme or plot, she acted. Yes, and look where it got her. When the Firewing launched her attack on humanity, it was an act of hubris. She lashed out because she didn't consider our species to be a threat. It would be equally hubristic for us to assume that she'll make the same mistake twice. I will continue digging into this while you and the team tackle your next run. With luck, I will have more information to share upon your return. Sounds good, Paul. One last thing, quick Luke. My lead was able to restore the readable surface of one of Green Winner's DVDs. I'd like you to take a look. You will find it sitting beside the player. Just one of them? I'll check it out. Maybe later I've got to run to concentrate on it. I'll say just one of them? She's still working on the others. Many of them are extensively damaged, and getting anything off of them is proving to be quite a chore. She's told me that she'll be in touch if and when she makes any headway. Thanks, Paul. Alright, so... Where is the player? There it is. The media tray of the DVD player slides out of its battered plastic case. Okay. Load the DVD labeled Watch Me. Load the second DVD. I'm going to load the second DVD. Software of the spinning DVD is punctuated by an occasional rattling sound. Okay. Got the menu. Play track one. The screen goes blank for a moment. Green Winners appears on the screen. The timestamp on the video reads uh, November 11, 2054. All right. As I said in my last recording, I've been having trouble finding a hard facts on the Firewing. So I thought I'd open things up a bit. Let's see what the rumor mill has to say. Uh, uh, this was. Uh, huh. I don't know if we've read this or not. Anyway, so for the past five hours, I've been poking around some of the crazier fringe theories related to dragons and the SOX. As a reminder, the SOX is an irradiated wasteland between France and Germany. They got zoned off back in 08 after the Ketanum Guau reactor meltdown. Anyway, there are all kinds of rumors floating around about the place. I've heard stories about a walled city in there that operates on a survival of the fittest kill or be killed basis. Sort of like a nightmare inversion of Berlin. All of the anarchy, but none of the stability that the upstate provides. The radiation, poisoning, cancer, and monopollution are all just icing on the cake. So when Adrienne helped the Luftwaffe shoot Firewing down, she crashed into the socks. That much is well known. What isn't as well known are all of the modern day myths that have risen about her since then. And tonight, I've earned an earful. I chatted up a girl who claimed to be a ghost rat. That's a smuggler that operates in the socks. She told me about a dragon cult called the Disciples of the Cleaning Fire. Apparently these cultists worship some sort of radioactive ghost dragon. Could be Firewing, or could be nothing. But it's worth digging into all the same. Another thing that my little ghost rat told me. The popular rumor in the socks is that Firewing's astral form was, I guess you'd say, mutated by all of that background radiation. Some of the glow punks out there say that she shed her body like an old coat. Others say that she's trapped, doomed to languish as an intangible radioactive ghost. I don't know how much credence to give any of this. After all, I, I don't have any proof that my ghost rat is even a ghost rat. She might be, but then she could also be a run-of-the-mill glow punk. Or maybe she's just yanking my chain. She's never been to the socks at all. Who knows? Well, it's food for thought, anyway. 
I don't know whether the thought of some radioactive ghost dragon thing is any scarier than a genuine, scarier than a genuine dragon is, but it's interesting all the same. Now the big question is, will any of this give me any closer to finding Adrian? I'm going to go out on a limb and say no, but you never can tell. So, uh, play track two. The screen goes blank. Da -da -da. The timestamp on the video reads November 12th, 2054, so a day later. All right, let's continue thinking outside the box. After the dragon fall, the great dragon, Kaltenstein, came flying into the socks to rescue Firewing. But he was driven off, some say killed, by Lofuer and Nebelhair. So, what if there's another dragon involved in all of this? Winners grabs a thick, leather-bound tome from a shelf behind him, licks finger, and begins to leap through it. All right, so let's run down the list of major dragons that could be helping her. First, there's the Golden Worm, Lofwer, the CEO of Seder Krupp and quite possibly the single most dangerous being on Earth. Lofwer is a local boy, so he'd be in position to help Firewing. He certainly has the financial capability to help her. He could send a, he could send a small army into the Sox if he wanted to. So he's definitely got the means. But I can't say how he had to have the modem. Motive. Motive. Modem. Motive. He actively prevented the Firewing's rescue back in 2012, after all. Same thing is true for Nebelhair. So let's scratch the both of them off the list. He flips a page, frowning. We've got Aiden, the great Shurush. He's operating out of Turkey. By all accounts, he's not a fan of Lawfare. They're actively competing for territory in the Middle East. So I suppose that could, that could be considered motive. Reviving the Firewing might cause problems for the Golden Worm. But would he risk a war with Seder Krupp by straying onto Lawfare's territory? Again, I don't think that's likely. He turns another page. There's Celadir on Wells. He's pretty heavily invested in Transys Neuronet. So he's got the money, but he's too busy dealing with the BTL killer scandal that Transys is going through out in London to get his claws dirty in the socks. Flip. Dunkelzon out in the UCAS. Pauses, shakes his head. Then he slams his tome shut. Nope. This is a waste of time. The more I think about it, the more convinced I am. The Firewing is acting alone. Dragons don't cooperate unless they absolutely have to. After all, why bother making a nice with your equals when you got an entire planet full of pawns at your disposal? They don't need to work together. They have us to exploit. Alright, okay, play track three. While this track does load, it's clearly corrupted. The screen fills with a meaningless stream of text. Alright, let's see if there's anything in here. I, it does look like a meaningless stream of text. There may be some code in here, but uh, I'm not seeing it. Nothing is jumping out at me. Old is the only word I see. Old slash e. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Text disappears and run itself back to the main screen. Alright, play track four. This file is partially garbled. Garbled. You can recognize a few words here and there, but they're interspersed amidst a solid block of corrupted text. So, Vauclair, which is who we're looking for, still my big bruh, so brother, still my big brother, still searching for, swear to something, I will, I will find you, Aslian, I will find you. It's the last, probably, so if it's the last... Uh, swear to new research. Don't know who. Play track five. File is corrupted. The screen fills with a meaningless assortment of ASCII characters. Once again, it's just garbled junk. Yeah, I've not seen any. Play track six. The screen goes black. And the same digital chime that you heard on the Dragonfall DVD plays again. A crackle of static fills the air, followed by that same now familiar electronic whine. A few moments later, uh, this play goes live. Vauclair. Ah, it's Adrian Vauclair. That's who we've been looking for. That's uh, Green Winner's brother and the guy who uh, helped 
shoot down the uh, the dragon during the attack years ago. Valclara looks haggard. His eyes are heavily bagged and bloodshot, and his hair is must. He holds a cigarette in an unsteady hand. Hermy, it's me. I can't sleep. I don't know where you are. Out having fun, no doubt. Maybe flirting with one of those unattainable beauties that you're always chasing. He tries on a smile, but it quickly disappears. He takes a drag on a cigarette. That's good. I want you to live a pleasant, normal life. After all, one of us should. Valclara rubs his eyes. I... I can still smell the smoke, Harmy. It's almost a year later, and I can still taste the stench of burning corpses. When I sleep, I can hear the sirens and the screams. There's no sound in this world as horrible as a burn victim's screams. The doctors would call this PTSD, I'm sure. PTSD is an aside, of course, to one's for post-traumatic stress disorder, but a combat veteran's experience. It. They'd have me in therapy, maybe dose me up on SSRIs like they due to our veteran soldiers. He chuckles and takes on a drag. Quite a story for the tabloids. The great dragon slayer, Adrian Vauclair, mentally incapable of wrestling wrestling with his own demons. He shakes his head. Nope. No therapy for me. Certainly no medication. I have a reputation to live up to. However poorly deserved it is and however little I want it. He pauses, stubs out a cigarette. The dragon is still alive, Hermy. That I am certain. One day I will find her, and then, perhaps, I'll be able to sleep through the night. The display goes black, the background wine fades away, a moment later you find yourself deposited back at the menu screen. So eject the DVD. Alright, uh, Power down the DVD player and step away. Okay. Let's check this guy out again. Uh, sorry to bother you. Okay, let's head out. Pretty sure it's the gypsy guy that I'm supposed to go talk to you for the this other. And I've got little indicators up here pointing three different directions I can go for missions. So what are my objectives? Well, I've got 17 points of karma to spend. So take the Yuban to AG Kimi, or not quite yet. Meet with Junari, or Ganari, uh, about the missing shipment. Raise 50000 to pay Alice. I'm not sure why I have three indicators. I can think of two. Oh, two, uh, I'm pointing to two different subway stations. That's the deal. All right, so let's spend some karma. Dante. Spend it. Spend karma. 17 points. Glad I remembered that before another combat started. I definitely want to do some range stuff. Uh, charisma. Unlocks etiquettes that affect conversations. That would be nice. What is that? That's a new etiquette with two more points. Hmm, that might be worth it. Because I do like to open up new conversation trees. So I'm gonna sp but that would be seven points to get there, I think. I'm not sure that I want to do that. Huh. Dodge. Yeah, I definitely want to put at least one more point into dodge. That cost me four points to get that up. Uh, okay, and I can, for quickness, if I bump that, then um, not only does it increase my chance to hit, but it reduces the chance to be hit. So I'm going to bump that by a point. Um, that cost me a karma. Um, I 
let's hit the maximum for trolls, which I'm out of trolls. Ranged combat. Main component used to calculate the chance to hit with ranged weapon. Okay. What's that on? Oh, nine is the maximum quickness for a human, so I'm almost at the max. That's why they call him Quick Luke. All right, range combat five. That's probably when by this increases to hit by ten percent. Cooldown three rounds for an aim shot for SMG. So that would be nice, but I think I'm going to bump my range combat one more point. That'll use up all my karma. So, nice. Quick look! Alright, let's go talk to my man here about his problem with some of my stole hits. Here he is. Here's my gypsy man. Gunari Metbach. Welcome back. You need some weapons? Some ammunition, perhaps? Say, uh, got your message about that missing shipment. How can I help? He nods. Hey, a gang from a nearby Kiez has been hijacking shipments bound for the cruise bosser, taking money out of our pockets. I could use your help to stop this from happening. Your dear departed Monica used to provide encryption and information control for the cruise bosser. Now that she's gone, we merchants have been having no end of trouble. The obvious answer is that a gang has been intercepting our communications. You could say what kind of communications? Shipping manifest, payment orders, that kind of thing. A group with an agenda could use that information to set an ambush, and that's just what this gang has been doing. Several cargo trucks full of goods have already been hijacked en route to the cruise bus. Man, they messing with our neighborhood. I had a tracking device planted on the last shipment that I sent out. Containers full of weapons and medical supplies. Sure enough, it got taken, and I've tracked it to the Gesson de Brunnen. If you've never been there, it's a Kiez built out of an old U-Bahn an old u station, and some old bunkers. Rumor has it a new gang called the Robin Geister is holed up there. I suspect that these two things are related. So I need you to go to Gesson Brunnen, find the Robin Geister. That's the gang. So. The Gesson Brunin is the neighborhood. The Robin Geister is the gang. And get our goods back. I can offer you 500 new yen for the task. And if you can recover our missing weapon shipment, I'll be able to sell you some better hardware tool. Um, so I can say, can you tell me anything about this gang? How do I get to the Gesson Brunin? I'll take care of it. I'm definitely going to take care of this. I mean, the, the the new yen, yeah, 500 new yen, that's all great and everything, but to be able to buy more weapons or newer gear would be great, so. I was thinking, can you tell me anything else about this gang, the Robin Geister? He frowns. Not much, I'm afraid. From what I've heard, the Robin Geister are tricky. They have a reputation for stirring up trouble, then disappearing without a trace. I would tread carefully in Gessenbrunnen if I were you. How do I get to Gesson Brunin? Just take the U-Bahn. The line still runs, though not many folks stop at Gesson Brunin anymore. The market there used to be something of a tourist attraction, but I think they've fallen on hard times recently. I'll take care of it. I could say I'll see what I can do, no promises, but I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to take care of it, huh? Good. It's about time I had some new inventory come in. One more thing, quickly. I'm going to need you to go in light on this one. Take a friend along if you like, but no more than one. If you spook them, they could trash the merchandise. Best go quiet. Best go soon, too, before the trail goes cold. Alright, so... He's still yellow. Why is he still yellow? I guess it's just a bug. I have cash, and I need a weapon. Show me the goods. I'm here to buy a carry to um, see if he's got any armor. He does have armor. What am I wearing? Integrated full body protective armor. 
Styled for intimidation and production, used by security forces worldwide, grants plus 10 hit points. An armor jacket, available in a wide range of styles, provides good protection screenly, grants plus 1 strength and plus 5 HP. Huh. Secure tech vest, I get plus 1 quickness and plus 5 HP. Victory Rapid Transit Light Jumpsuit for runners on the go. Has breathable fabric, gel based padding, and, and density plastic for top mobility. So, you get armor 4, but you also get plus 1 dodge and plus 1 move speed. That's nice. It's pretty sweet stuff in here. I think I'm going to roll with uh, the slight security armor. I'm going to swap it. Nice. And Quick Luke is looking kind of crazy now. I'm going to send, um, I need to sell this armor. I'm going to send this to the stash. I'm going to swap it. No, I don't want to do that. I want to send this to the stash. How do I do that? Uh, no. God, what's going on? I want it here. I want that here. How do I sell it? What's going on here? I think I broke something. Sells that armor. Let's see if I can figure this out. Um, okay, so I can sell that for 25 new yen. That'll work. Sell. Alright. Abuse stash. So what else has he got? I've already, I think I've already pretty much got the top of the line. Uh, let's see what gun I'm using. So I'm using a Beretta Model 70 with a Smart Link. Um, Damage 6, range medium, 30 bullets. The Mossberg CMDT shotgun, that thing's sweet. You know, I'm, I don't really need this Ares Predator. I guess it's not a bad idea to have it, but it does 10 damage. Hmm. Yeah, I, just, I mean, it's not a bad gun, but I've already got the shotgun and the submachine gun, so... So the Bretto model, 70, damage 6, range medium, capacity 3rd. I'm going to talk to this guy again. Look at his guns. Yes. Oh, it's a taser. Damage 9, range, okay, so... Damage 10, these are nicer. Damage 10, range medium, cap 24. And this also has smart link. So I'm gonna go the Colt Cobra does ten damage and it has a smart link and I've got a jack to take advantage of that. The smart gun does nine damage but it has six more shots in it, so you have to reload less often. I'm going to go with the Cold Cobra. Let's see what grenades he's got. The last battle we got in, they had these um, phosphorus grenades. Those things were sweet. Uh, concussion grenades, smoke grenade. 
think I'm pretty good on grenades. I might be, I might pick up one more grenade. Confirm. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna swap out this Beretta with the uh, Colt Cobra, which looks like a pretty sweet one. I need to sell this. I'm just gonna send it to the stash. What is this? Flashbang grenade. Cavalier grenade. I'm gonna send this to the stash. There was a. What's this? This bliss. Incoming damage reduced by four. Strength reduce. Not bad. I'm gonna hold on to that. I just can't help but to think that'd be handy. Let me talk to this guy again and sell on the stash. Alright, I'm going to sell the Predator. I'm going to sell the Beretta. Uh, I'm going to sell the Nitro. Sell Nitro. I don't really think I need the drone repair kit. Riggers. Alright. I'm gonna run over and check the, the doctor. See if he's got it. any really good trauma kids. Where's he? Is he in here? Doc, what kind of trauma kits you got? I really needed those that last, that last fight. Uh, medical supplies. Yep, he's got these really nice trauma kits. I'm going to buy both of them. Yep. Buy a couple more of these. Confirm. And I'm going to swap out. One grenade, one grenade. Oh, I'm gonna swap. What have I got? That's just a level one trauma kit. I need to. Do I want to bring in a tech, a healing kit, or do I want to bring in a trauma kit? I think I'm gonna bring that in, and I want to send this trauma kit to the stash and bring in one of these gold trauma kits. Talk to him and do some selling. Some stuff. I'll go ahead and sell these. Mm -hmm. I'll sell this. I thought there was a number one. Yeah, there it is. Sell that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exit. Okay. Let's head. Let's see if we can go take care of this uh, supply problem with this new gang in this neighborhood. So let's go find a. Option, I'll take the U-Bond to go send the button and kiss. Kiss. Quick loops. Got your, your new sweet armor, dude. And your new sweet submachine gun. Now, I can only take like one person with me on this. So, who do I want to take? There's the U-Bond. Yeah, I think that's bugged that he's still yellow. Because it's not showing a... Who am I going to take? Similar team and travel to AG Kevin in Europe. Travel to Gusen, Gusen the new bond station. Locate Gunari's. Let's go to the. Locate Gunari's missing shipments. Who am I going to take? I can only think, take one other person. I can take Dietrich, Glory, Eager. Combat medic. Dietrich. Uh, I'll take 
glory. Alright. Confirm. Okay, and that'll be it for uh, part nine of Shane Play's series of uh, Shadow and Returns Dragonfall. And next time we'll be uh, cruising into the Gessen Brunin and see if we can take care of these supply shipment problems. So, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.